Hello everyone, John Price here, Director of Vehicle Design for ECD out here in Kissimmee, Florida. Uh, today we're gonna chat about the evolution of Land Rover uh, SUVs over the years. Uh, in particular, of course, going through the differences from or Series 2A, Series 3, and the fenders as you see, of course, in our showroom uh, mostly today. Of course, it's a very interesting history, how a farm vehicle in this early beginnings turned out to be today, a luxury item or a vehicle that you can use daily uh, with, of course, all the different customizations uh, that we do to them ourselves. Um, the beauty about it though, is that we have a product for everyone's needs. So depending on what the client is looking for, the type of experience that they want to have with this uh, truck, we will find, of course, the perfect match. Uh, and some folks go with something that is very traditional, uh, very simple in a way, very mechanical in feel, or other folks want to have uh, the most advanced technology, uh, highest performance, et cetera. And somewhere in that spectrum, of course, we tend to find the sweet spot that uh, reflects exactly what we're trying to accomplish. But primarily the differences between these vehicles, such as the Series 2A from the 1960s, uh, Series 3 of the 1970s and early 80s, and then of course from 1983 to about 2015, what you see as the more modern Defender um, iterations, um, is that some of them, of course, over time had added features, um, styling, of course, change uh, from the type of um, lighting, trimming, etc. of course, that you will see around the cars. And between the Series 2A and the Series 3, the changes were fairly subtle. Uh, there were some improvements inside and um, outside of the vehicle. You will see, of course, in the Series 2A, how the small lights were recessed inside the grille with the fender completely exposed, like larger fender flares, of course. Uh, then you go into the Series 3, which is almost like a pre-Defender era truck and the 1970s and early 80s, where you have the proper placement or the modern placement that you see on these trucks now um, on the fenders themselves. And um, of course, inside the car uh, became a little bit more civilized. And instead of having uh, mechanical doors, of course, we added uh, power windows and you know even power windows in the back in the 110, for instance. Um, and we have the ability, of course, to further enhance these vehicles. Like I said, if someone wants to go with a very basic heritage style of vehicle, like a Series 2A, we've done uh, vehicles like Project Henry, for instance, in which we had a, uh, again, pretty much down to the bounds uh, factory look uh, on the vehicle with an LS3 engine and a manual transmission that was an absolute blast to drive. But that client didn't want to have any air conditioning, power uh, windows, want to be completely off the grid. So that's of course what the Series 2A will provide. Um, and in between will be the Series 3, which will have a little bit more paneling inside the vehicle that allows for some elements to be incorporated, like um, a classic AC unit down below. Um, and of course, you have uh, a, a more um, elaborate interior, if you will, where you can cover in leather some of the elements as well to, to dress it up a little bit more. But um, then is when you see the progression in the front end, of course, more to a Defender style with the lights go all the way out instead of being nestled in the middle of the vehicle. And uh, But very much uh, similar styling in the roof lines and the rest of the car as the Series 2A. And then, of course, in the 80s, we get into the Defender era vehicles, which is what you see in most of our trucks today. Although in 2007, there was a uh, change in style when they called the Puma style builds, where you have the different dash inside, better ergonomics, etc., which is truly what we use probably 95% of our trucks, unless someone wants to retain the classic flat panel, of course. Um, but all in all, of course, I think that it, it truly depends on the client. Um, we've done some um, amazing resto mods where you have a hybrid between the two. We had a gentleman, of course, in Project Grover, for instance, that brought his own Series 2A and wanted to restyle the front to look more like a Series 3. And also we were able to add things like AC and a proper radio, of course, inside, and even our internal roll cage for uh, added safety, which of course the car did not have originally. 
So these are the type of things, of course, that we can always do in the find that sweet spot, as I mentioned earlier, where our clients can go and look at something um, extremely uh, rudimentary in a sense to something that is more plush and comfortable and even suitable for daily driving. So I'm sure that we can find the perfect mix for you. And uh, of course, if we can help in any way with questions you may have, you know where to find us.